So I think the main purpose of this meeting is um, to give uh, Jeff some input on the complete streets. Um, I think the only other thing that's happened between when we last met and this meeting is, um, <clears throat> Jeff, we do have a, requ uh, a request in for funding for the visioning. Um, I don't know, what, you know, given everything that's happened since the last time we met, I don't know how realistic that is, but we do have a request in for possibly some funding. I believe the funding got got accepted so we do have the funding I believe but not for the not for the complete streets this is for a visioning project for the center of town oh something different uh, yeah something. A, the, we actually made two requests we made one request uh, for it to be included in the state budget and then another capital request um, okay. and yeah I think it's <laughs> given the uncertainty I don't I don't know how confident I am in either of those, but the requests are in. Okay. Well, we'll see what happens. Um, so Jeff, basically you wanted to get some input on the three possible complete street projects. Yeah. So get a good funded. Um, I am going to just pull up uh, on the screen for those who can see it. Um, where are we? Um, sorry, I thought I had this up. Awesome. Um, maybe it's here. Um, uh, nope, that's not it. I uh, sorry. Um, I'll. Hold it up. That doesn't help much. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> um, I think I've got it. I'm my sorry. computer. <laughs> Thought I had it up already. Oh, because I'm looking in the wrong place. Sorry, there's a finance committee meeting right before this, and that's what happened. Um, here it is. So for folks who are on screen, this is basically what was sent. Um, there are three uh, improvements included. Um, South Silver Lane, um, Falls Road bicycle accommodations, and South Main Street sidewalks. Um, and I think that uh, one of the things we just wanted to, to go through is, is how the Village Center Committee would want to prioritize those, those three things. And then um, in particular, any, any sort of initial design input. Um, and George, feel free to jump in as well. Um, I think that was that was the main purpose, right? Yeah, so, so, so the only question I really have is, um, so Falls Road and South Main Street sidewalk on the, on the west side, mm -hmm. those, those two projects I think we should really go through with. The one on South Silver, there's a couple questions on that, that being on the east side of that road and on the west side of that section that they wanna put the new sidewalks, there is catch basins all along the curbing of that road. And if they wanted to narrow that road up, what are we going to do with all that, all that uh, drainage that is there? Cause that'll be right in the middle of the sidewalk. Ooh. So we're either going to have to move some of that drainage over and that's probably going to be out of the budget that we have for that project. I don't think there's enough room in the grass area to keep it, you know, to build it on the grass section of it. I don't think that layout is wide enough. Um, we'll have to do some more research on that to find out if that grass area is going to be wide enough or not, or if we're going to have to move that, move the drainage if we want to go through with that sidewalk there. 
Um, so how do we make that determination? Um, I have that, a book at the top that, that gives us all the old county layouts and stuff from, from way back when, when they first laid out all those roads and I can kind of try to figure out how wide that layout is, how many rocks, stuff like that to find out where, okay. where the layout is. Cause I know that road section through there is about 30, 30 feet wide, something like that. Um, and it is it is a quite quite wide layout through that section, but I'm not sure if it goes back into the yards four feet beyond the curb where it is now. I mean, I mean that's, I'll just have yeah. to do a, a little bit more research on it to find out if if that is you know feasible so, to reach that feet. So George, are you saying that basically we have enough money to do all the projects if South Silver Lane can be done? <laughs> in a straightforward manner, but if, if we have to start dealing with drainers, then we probably don't have enough money. I think so. I mean, because you're going to have to, I think there's probably on that side of the road, there's probably at least 20 catch basins. You would have to dig up and move four feet at least mm -hmm. to, to accommodate the sidewalk going through there. On which, I, this is Scott, I just got dialed in. On which project, George? Uh, South Silver. That makes sense. And I take it that's the only uh, that it can only go on that side of the street. It couldn't go on the other side. Well, both both sides have drainage all the way all the way down it. Okay. Um, so the, the east side, I guess, was was the most appealing, I guess. Um, but we have to take in consideration of all that all the drainage that's there. I mean, could you could you dip the sidewalk down, you know, in each spot where the drainage is, and have a catch basin manhole cover in the middle of it? I I don't know if they'd allow that. You know what I mean? You don't want to be collected water on the sidewalk. No. Yeah, exactly. So that's just something we're gonna have to take a quick peek at and uh, right, see so if it'll it sounds work. Sounds like the other two jumped to the top of the list. <laughs> yeah. What's that? Sounds like the other two jumped to the top of the lift. I think so. Um, George, are there catch basins on both sides of the road? There is. And how so far they go apart from are the, they? So they go from the east side to the west side, and then they drain down into the, you know, through the yards and stuff, and uh, go down into that ditch that's way behind all the houses. And are they like every 300 feet or something, or...? or? I think they're around every 200 feet or something like that. Two, so you're gonna two, three hundred. I've never there. really measured them out, so I'm not sure of the distance on them. So it looks Is there like any the section without basins. Oops. Excuse me. Um, most of that whole section that they're talking about putting a sidewalk has basins in them. I can I can go, I can go out there Monday and, and take account of how many basins there, there there's going to be in that section. And I can yeah. I, I was can, just wondering whether we could do any of it uh, at all. What's that? I was wondering whether we could do any of it at all. Right. Whether. Well, just without thinking about the catch basins, as I wrote down, my first question was at the intersection where you've got the drainage, whether that's a wetland technically right at the intersection. So if you're widening out into there, is that going to be an issue or a time problem? And then the fact that all the mailboxes are on the east side and that's everybody's lawn. I just, I don't know what the history is and whether people are aware they're going to lose five feet of front yard, even if it did work out. The... Yeah, look it looks like the intention on South Silver was two things. It was the sidewalk and also the bike lanes. Should we proceed with the bike lanes? I mean, you can narrow narrow up the paint the painting part of it and, and just put bike lanes in if that's if that's what you wanted to do. That might create a, a way, uh, you know, not for little kids, but at least a, a sort of a concept for walking. <laughs> Yeah, so you, you basically can make the breakdown lanes a little bit wider and narrow up the travel lanes. How old's the pavement on that one, George? Uh, that was paved probably six or seven years ago. Not that long ago. And then the, uh, yeah, so that section is probably 
I want to say six or seven years. I can, I could find out exactly. I got, I got the notes all at work. So, um, I mean, if we do bike, if we do bike lanes, I'd recommend not doing um, as large of stencils that we did on South Main Street and as yeah. often, because um, we got a lot of complaints about that. So going back to South Main Street, um, we had noted at our last meeting that, that this document says we're going to a six foot sidewalk when we went to a five foot sidewalk on the east side. And we're planning we five foot sidewalks on North Main. I don't know. First of all, I'm not sure you'd ever get six feet in, in most locations, but it would also mm -hmm. just be inconsistent. Yeah, I don't think we'd be able to do six feet. I think we'd have to stay with the, the four or five foot sidewalk that we did on the other side to stay consistent with it. Yeah, I think that makes sense. It would be, it would be weird to go six foot on the west side. Um, it sounds um, like you're making a designated tricycle lane with that extra foot, but I don't know. How <laughs> that. And how are we going to lay that out, Sarah? Is that kind of the way you did it the last time where you sort of walked it and yeah, in most cases, the walk was right up against the property line. We found a lot of those pins over there. So yeah. we, we could start off guessing we're in that same situation. So it'd have to come a foot or two toward the street. And then you have to deal with the, the trees as they come. I remember we walked around with Sherry, but we didn't get too specific when we thought about it before. The other thing that stuck out to me was down at the south end, where it kind of goes into an X where it crosses over. It's yeah, a weird looking thing, but um, I know up by where is it where the bus stop is or the house next door, they have a little wall there and a tree that's close down, so that'd be another tight situation. There's a few tight situations, that's one of them. Mm -hmm. um, down at the other end, just before it takes the jog, it's quite tight. And then there's, there's a, that, section down, that section down towards Cemetery Road. There was a large, a large tree that uh, where that that sidewalk jog there. We took that tree down last year because it was rotted, and uh, the power company came in and, and took it down for us. So there's just a stump there, so that that sidewalk can be straightened out a little bit down through there, if need be. I'm just wondering in general, and this is totally like talking off the top of my head, um, when when we do do tree replacements, should we be pushing those trees a foot or so toward the road so that we I, don't encumber the sidewalk so much? Yeah, so all the all the new Pushing trees that I planted in the last two years, I've moved them up two or three feet. Toward the road? Away, away, yeah, towards the road, away from the sidewalk. So every tree that I've replanted, I've moved up. Right. Um, so do we have, it's hard, I can't see everyone. Um, do we have a, I mean, I don't see how we can proceed on South Silver until you know for sure whether it's doable. So I would say, I would agree with you that we should uh, proceed with the other two and, and see then how far we can get on South Silver. You, I mean, if it's 32 feet of pavement inside, maybe a 50 foot right away, you have the space, but you've got it that obviously the drainage situation is costly. And then the, um, just the lawns and everything in there. I know every time you try to take somebody's front yard, you have to remind them we're not really taking your front yard. It's really part of the road right away. <laughs> right. So this is Scott. What was the larger objective of the South Silver. We, we have for a number of years gotten back from folks at that end of town that it'd be nice to tie sidewalks all the way out toward Plum Tree. And this was placed in the project list as one of the steps toward getting to that point. And I'd hate, I'd hate to throw it out for the sake of it being, you know, slightly out of, uh, maybe a little more difficult to achieve. I don't think we're going to try, we're not going to throw it out totally, but we just got to figure out how feasible it is to, to put a sidewalk there, whether we have to move all that drainage or 
Do we have enough room on the back side of the drainage in the lawns? And if the post office would move to the mailbox to, to the other side of the road, I mean, I asked them to do that when we did the, the sidewalk on um, Hadley Road, and they told me absolutely not. So we had to make sure we had enough room to put sidewalks or uh, to put the um, mailboxes between the sidewalk and the road. So that's another another factor that we're going to have to deal with. Yeah, I, I understand that, George. I just don't want to rank it poorly because it seems like it's difficult. No, no. I mean, it is a little more difficult than the other two. The other two are pretty much straight up, forward, easy to do, but this one's going to take a little bit more work. That's all. Well, I mean, I guess the question is, do we have enough money for it? I, I think it doesn't matter if it's more work, if we can afford it. Um, right. I mean, I don't know what we got for the, for the budget for, for this, this, this uh, tier of this, of the complete streets. I'm not sure. Is the 201,000 that's listed, is that the estimate for the cost of that piece? Yeah, I think, I think was... that's just for the layout of the sidewalk and stuff. That's not anything else. Just the layout? Well, to, to install it Yeah. for the digging and the insta installation of the sidewalk. I don't think that's anything to do with any of the drainage of any of the drainage that we have to do or anything like that. There, there, excuse me. There's a more detailed breakdown that the county did when it came up with these numbers. Mm -hmm. that maybe has a further description in it. I don't know. I'd be surprised if it included moving catch basins, but maybe it did. I don't think it did, Rock, but um, maybe we can maybe we can go back to the the FERCOG and find out what when they did their little study part of it if the, if it was in that piece or not. You know, Scott, to your point about wanting to nibble our way down toward Plumtree, maybe we could shorten the project and have enough money so that the state would allow us to, to do whatever, 1,100 feet uh, with all the drainage stuff that we have to do. Yeah, you raise a good point. Keep it, keep it toward the Again, the, the goal in including that was the feedback we've heard. Well, to make sure that we don't forget about the country and we don't forget about over. You know, there's, there's four, four members of this group who basically live at, on or adjacent South, South Main Street. So I want to make sure that we don't leave that bias focused. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Uh I'm happy to see them go in any order, but I think it sounds like George needs to figure out how much he can do, how much, or some we need to figure out how much we can do for the two th money we have. Correct. So is what, I mean, do we have to order these one, two, three? And if we do, does the money allocated on the, the sheet we have is that the ceiling for that project or does what's sort of allocated uh, for the other project ranks get pulled over to um, the other project? Like, you know, Falls Road or, Sunder or South Main is 104,000. If South Silver was more expensive, would we allocate some to that or is each project separate? That's a good question. Sarah, when we executed the last one, it was pretty much not mistaken. Um, Scott, my, my recollection is that we tried to move some extra money from the east side of South Main, the sidewalk, over onto the west side because maybe there was a little extra money there. They wouldn't let us do that, I know. Wow. They wouldn't let us do anything on the other side. And I don't know if you can move among the projects. Um, but I think looking at the cost that uh, FERCOG did, or redoing the cost, I think is a first step if uh, George counts whatever, how many catch basins, he plugs a number in there, I don't know what the costs are nowadays, 5,000 a catch basin or something, and uh, with the drainage, and then see how far we can go down South Silver, 
we, maybe we can get down further than we think. Who knows? That's a good point, Rock. Well, let me, I'm doing the math here. If that road is 32 feet wide, so it's 16 feet halfway, they're looking at a 10 foot lane and a five foot bike lane and a one foot buffer. So that's your whole 16 feet. So that would mean the curb line doesn't move and the drainage stays where it is. Yes, the basins are at the curb line. Yeah, the basins are on the curb line. So are they talking about putting the sidewalk basically from the curbs that are in the grass area? Yeah, it says with an 18 inch buffer and then a five foot sidewalk. Hmm. So maybe we don't so have if to move the pavement's 32. Yeah, if the pavement's 32 and you've got 20 feet travel lane and six feet on either side for the bike lane, that matches the 30, 32 that's there if it moves the striping over. So if we're in a 50 foot layout, which would be your average road, 16, we've got 11 feet on the side to put that six feet, six and a half feet of sidewalk in. So it looks like, unless it was a really narrow layout, that you've got the right of way to put it in off the road. Yeah, that, that layout's pretty wide through there. I think I'm pretty sure it is a 50 foot layout through there. So would that alleviate the mailbox problem too then? We'd be on the other side of the mailboxes? That 18 inch buffer strip, they could fit in there. Especially because you've got a bike lane so you don't have traffic running right up against it either. Yep. Theoretically. Mm -hmm. Okay, problem solved. <laughs> Thanks, Sarah. Um, so can we see all three? <laughs> so these are the cost estimates that came with the other projects initially, or has anything been changed? Is this just the paragraphs taken out of the old application when they did their study? I think so. I think those, those are the original numbers that, that were put in into the each each section of each project. I think that's a, that's the original number that came came out with it. So we did really well. The prices came in low last time and we did really well. We don't right. know what's gonna happen, but we do know the price of oil is down, which could help us out. Right. But could I make a, I, I'm looking on uh, Google Maps, the visible, and it looks like the north end is probably close to 30 feet wide, but as you get to the south end, it's looking narrow when I scroll over it. That, that section of road basically from Old Amherst Road to the farm field where they want to stop the sidewalk, that, that first section through there is, is like 32 feet wide. It's, it's a wide section all the way down through there. Now, once you start getting down the other end, the south end, it starts narrowing up down on that end. Right. It's right down by that, right down by that swale just past Kitchen Garden, right? Yeah, just before that, it starts to narrow up. That last house on the left before Kitchen Garden, it starts to narrow up down through there. Not a lot, but I mean, that, that section, pretty much that whole road is, is quite wide all the way down through the whole thing, so. So how close do we get to Plumtree at, with this project? It's only going to um, the last, I think it's the last house before before kitchen garden it might even be before that it might be the last house before the field um before kitchen garden it's 2200 feet so i'm not sure where about that ends up yeah i want to say it's the last house on the left before it hits the field then there's a field then there's two houses and then kitchen garden so i think it's somewhere in that area Given that that road narrows and that the goal is to get to Plumtree, is there going to be a way to get to Plumtree in another phase or is that? You might have to jump across the street with the sidewalk mm -hmm. um, because most of the, I think a lot of the houses on the, on the southern side of that, that project would be real tight to the road. So you might have to jump to the others 
you might have to jump to the west side of the of the roadway. So then why wouldn't we just do there. the sidewalk? Why wouldn't we just do the sidewalk on the west side? Is there a reason? Because on, the, because on the north side, the houses are real close on the on the okay. west side. All right. So Jeff, do we need to pri if we can if we can address all of them, if there's a sufficient number, do we need to prioritize or just a kind of say, let's go ahead with these projects? Well, I, I think that the key is that we're gonna, we're likely, and correct me if I'm wrong, but bid them out as, as individual projects, mm -hmm. not, not all together, right? I think we bid them out all as one lump last time, lump. didn't we, Sarah? Okay. Yeah, that was one project. So the concern about money between one and the other wasn't an issue because it was just so many tons of asphalt for the whole project. Right. Which makes it nicer because sure, then you can steal a little bit of money from each project to kind of move it. Sarah, was that easy to manage with Taylor Davis as one or whoever the contractor was? Did that make it easier to manage also as one bid? They were terrific. I would have liked to know as we went along how we were doing. It was um, the first, when we did the first phase on Garage Road, it was kind of all wrapped up with a bow and I knew how much that cost as we moved on to the next one. But then they didn't bill us for a while, so I wasn't quite sure. And we did very well, but, um, you know, I, I didn't know. I wasn't picking up the quantities day by day, but as far as the work that got done, they were great to work with because, you know, they speak back and forth and, and we got what we needed done. And simpler than if you were dealing with three or four different contractors or whatever. Yeah, definitely. Because you got the bid process and we only had, did we have three bidders or just two? There wasn't a huge amount of interest anyway, so it wasn't like they were, you know, buying for pennies. Um, then if, they, if they're not going to be bid separately, um, then it seems to make sense to do them together to design all three. I don't think that that necessarily needs to be a prioritization among them um, unless the committee feels for any reason that that you want to prioritize the construction on one before, you know, as far as which one gets done first or second or third, as long as they all get done. I mean, the only thing I would say is <clears throat> on South Main Street is, you know, potential conflict with the parade, but who knows if we'll have a parade this year. So maybe it's not an issue. It's funny you mention that. We just talked about that dinner. Seems unlikely. Right. So to the to the administration, Jeff, you know, having this out as a single big contract with a, a tiered scope, not necessarily advertising, as I recall, the opportunity last time, the last phase, it was, was able to mobilize, but able to jump around a little bit and do phases. Or distinctly the Happy Road down uh, River Road, they had mobilized, did a piece, of the second piece of other. That seemed to make a great deal of sense. Back to Rock's point about not splitting it up amongst different projects. Yeah. yeah I just don't recall last time. Sarah, did you have to do any drawings or anything so that they knew what they were getting into, or did we do it just from the written description? And we kept it simple. We used the tax maps and had dimensions and, you know, arrows from here to here in a typical section. Um, you know, the sidewalk ramps would just circle here, here, and here, that type of thing. So it was enough to have a visual and something wasn't completely accurate to measure off of and it was clearly stated this is not a sur survey you know go out there with your wheel if you want to get the quantities right but you do need something that's that's uh, an illustration in the bid package mm -hmm. and what are we and thinking? I, know I, I, I met with those guys several times last year when we when discussed the, you know certain aspects of the job we went out there and kind of looked at everything and you know, I'd like this here or this there, and I think it should go through here. And 
so Taylor Davis was pretty, pretty nice to work with that way. He, you know, he'd come and talk to me about, all right, maybe we should do this or and not this. And, and, you know, so it worked out well that way. So, so my, I guess my only concern is you worked with, you know, they were good to work with and they, that process went well, but at your publicly bidding it, you could wind up with someone who's not yeah, always so cooperative. And if you don't, if we haven't really documented it, are we opening ourselves up for problems? Well, I think because it's bid in quantities, you're paying them for the work that's actually done. And even though it'd be nice to have a lump sum, it leaves, you know, there's more room for argument that says this wasn't on the plan, it's not included. Whereas if you're paying for quantities, you can shift this, move something mm -hmm. else, add more, more gravel here or more asphalt mm -hmm. there, and it still comes up to, they know they're being paid by that bid of them for how much actually goes in. And it also relates to how much supervision they needed. I mean, we basically, I drove through every morning and George was available when something was needed or if they had a specific question, I came back. So it's a trade-off between spending money. You know, you could spend $10,000 getting a, a survey fine-tuned or you could hope it goes well or you could add more supervision on the back end if things start to look shady. Do we have any sense if the folks on Silver Lane have an idea that this is in the plans and that they know, you know, with a sidewalk going in, that could kind of make people, I think it'd be really important for people to know and understand what we're going to do. I think we should have the clerk send a letter. That you, Liz. I, what? Wait, wait, no. <laughs> I think Liz raises a point, that, you know, the, the folks on Oh, it took a little bit of time uh, to work the corner piece out, but that sidewalk sees a lot of traffic from, from the both sides. The sidewalk sees a lot of traffic, uh, which is the benefit of being able to have access to the apartment. So you're right. People, people over South Silver should, should get enough. By the way, we're talking about a sidewalk. Hello? Yeah. Scott, your voice came cut cut in and out for me a little bit. Oh, I, I was just I was I was saying that you were right with about notifying the people on silver and then letting all of the landowners know that this is a plan that works and express concerns. Yeah. I think the good news is the state was very patient with letting us work out some of the issues we had. So that was a, uh, I wouldn't want to say a surprise, but it was, it's good to know that they wanted us to work through the project and we got held up in a couple areas and they let us extend the deadlines. Yeah, that was nice. So when are we thinking this stuff would happen? Well, it's all got to go out to bid. So hopefully, I mean, if we can get it out sooner than later, and hopefully the bids will be back, hopefully by June, July, maybe. Well, we wouldn't probably start any of the projects till late, late summer, I'd imagine. Okay. By the time everything gets out to bid and, and then back, back to us and then approved, you know, for the, for the bidding contracts. So we were on a, we were on a conference call this morning and or four towns and rep play we're talking about things that were being impacted and one of the things being impacted was public works bidding this the rules of getting documentation going to a bid opening the bid opening they're pretty they're pretty rigid in their current form in our current environment uh, that's that's becoming a problem right So, that's, right. not, that's not to say that we can't we can't go for it, and put it out there and develop what makes sense to access documents to go to a public opening to do it with you know uh, social social distance. But all I'm guessing Scott that they'll come up with a solution because the state seems committed to moving public projects along. 
right, um, right. particularly infrastructure. And, um, you know, they're already dealing with permitting and other things. And I think they just haven't gotten to this, but I'm, I'm guessing they'll, they'll have a workaround. Yep, no, you raise a great point, Lauren. It was, a, it was raised this morning. So are we getting to say that we're going to uh, bid it all together and go, go, go? I think that's it. It's my vote. Go, go, go. <laughs> it certainly worked last time. Rock, do you have any problem with that process? No, no. I was hoping that we could use the bid documents, et cetera, from last time and then basically in-house almost or with help from Sarah just make some changes and quantities and descriptions and get it out fairly quickly within you know a couple of weeks or something like that I don't know whether that's feasible or not if you did then I would think somebody George somebody be able to start a couple of months from bid opening probably I haven't heard about things that are out to bid. I haven't heard about, I'm um, looking at the paving program in Northampton. They said they're up in the air on timing. They're not sure when they're putting things out. I think everybody's kind of scratching their head right now, even though they expect pavement to go forward. Everybody's schedule seems to be up in the air. I've got one in Waitley that's kind of hanging around. So being ready, having it uh, together, and advertised or what have you, you know, the timing, we may not be able to control contractors. Get lined up it was hard enough for the contractors to get people last year, year before, when things are good. Um, but getting it ready to go, you're a step ahead. I'm sure. I'm sorry. I'm sure. Uh, who's going to do the big document? Is that is that Jeff or Sarah or who's putting the bid document? So that's, I, I'd just point out that one of, one of the many interruptions of the emergency is I, I haven't gotten to do um, public procurement training. So I'm not a certified procurement officer yet. So that makes Go back me to the county. a little nervous. Yeah, I, I, feel, I think I feel more comfortable she's, having work on. It's a real good deal. Um, well, well, I appreciate that we're trying to, you know, save money and it, it would make a lot of sense. Um, I also don't want to screw it up and, and not be able to do yeah. the project. Yeah. Um, so as, as far as outreach to the residents, would, would we want to have, I, I think, a, a clearer idea of exactly where the sidewalk is going and how far and then and then do the outreach and say, this is the plan. And uh, do you see that outreach as being a letter or would you, I guess in this environment, a, a meeting is not, uh, not preferable, but um, so physical mailing and, and get back in touch with us, with the town, um, with any comments or concerns. And maybe uh, maybe the letter could have direct you to a website or something where you could actually see a, a mock-up of the plan or something so people have some visual, which I think helps. Now, would you want me to get a surveyor to come down through there and survey that 2,200 feet to figure out where where the property bounds are and stuff? Well, I would think that would be prudent, George. We can see what we got for pins. It's surprisingly easy to find the ones we found on South Main Street. Yeah, we were able to find quite a bit with uh, Fred from the water department. He found quite a bit for us. And those houses are newer, yeah, so they got a better chance of being there theoretically. Yeah. I think you have a, it's just, a tr I mean, on South Main Street, we already have a sidewalk. You know, you may come a foot or so onto, you know, onto the grass. We've already seen it happen on the other side of the street. I think the freak out um, potential is fairly low. 
but it seems to me on Silver Lane where you're talking about going from someone's grassy lawn to uh, a sidewalk, uh, those people have a right to know exactly where it's going. And right. you know, otherwise you're gonna have a major freak out. And I think particularly in this environment where people feel like they can't come over to town hall to talk to someone about it, um, the more we can do. I, I don't know, I would think that that might be one that you wanna get surveyed and you wanna have a, at least a diagram of what it's gonna look like so that people are know what they're what we're doing. Okay. Does that come out of this budget or is that something that the town pays for? I don't know if there's any money in an account that we set aside for this kind of project or if it, that has to come out of my budget. I'm not, I'm not sure. Jeff, do you know if there's an account for, for this kind of stuff or? Um, I think that there is a complete streets design, uh, account that has funds in it okay so i i can call the the, the surveyors and have them come out and do that that 2200 foot section yeah and there's also what uh 15 percent engineering contingency built into the the grant award as well okay scott i'm remembering that last year as part of capital improvement planning. Did we vote to set up some kind of catch-all engineering design capital improvement account and plop 50 grand in it or anything like that? Or am I dreaming on that? Uh, we discussed it. We didn't come to an actual vote bringing it. Okay. Well, don't we have the account that we're kind of using to pay Berkshire design for the uh, school street project and we kind of need most of the money for them but maybe is there some money in there I just said something we, we can look at there's yeah. development engineering services yeah I'm assuming it's probably gonna only be a few thousand bucks to to do that surveying on that side of the street okay so that's that's not a big deal anyway I don't. I don't think it's a, a large amount of money. I, I could be wrong. It could be up to five thousand, but I don't. I don't foresee it being that much. I think they would be doing what we would be doing. They're going to look for the pins. They're going to look for any discrepancies, and they're not going to do a whole boundary Correct. determination. They're just going to look for is it reasonable? Does anything look weird? Because otherwise, a lot sort of to to make all the pieces go together. But you know, if there's a good plan of that. They're pretty much they're looking for the pins and saying, "Does it look right?" You know, is there right. any surprise? Because we're not looking right. to you know move anything or quantify anything like an easement. We're just trying to make sure everybody knows where it is. And even if it's not precise, it's more information than we have now looking at the blades of grass. So right, you know, I, I can try to go out there and find find some. Uh, I'll grab a radar. Uh, you know. Uh, radar detector or whatever to go out there and, and find it. I need to go find my power cord. So I'm going to drop out and we can talk. If you want me to do something, let me know. And I can give you a proposal and we can talk about that later. Thanks, sir. Thank you very much. Thanks, sir. Great. So it sounds like pretty much we're just saying proceed. Uh, try to get some more information on Silver Lane so that the residents can be properly notified. And I think to Rock's point, let's get it out as soon as possible. And then we always have flexibility when we're going to do it, but at least we'll be ready. Right. You need a motion? Can we do it by consensus or? We can. Um, so do I have a motion to just uh, to proceed with the uh, putting the three complete street projects out to bid? No. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Objections? Or not, but I'll, uh, if I can put in some as well, I will. So. Okay.
All right. So I think, is that all you need from us, Jeff? Yeah, um, I didn't, uh, as far as the complete streets, yeah. And then just in general for the committee, I, I, I'm not really sure what we should be doing with the visioning until we have a sense of whether we have some um, financial support to move it forward. Um, but I think there's potential that Carlos will need more input on uh, where are we at with uh, School Street, Jeff, do you, or has there anything happened? No. Um, I, well, we we I had a conversation with Carlos today um, and and George, and I think I I think I was confused about what was happening. But I think now that we have a clearer vision of what's happening on North Main Street and the drainage and how it's going to connect to School Street, um, I'm going to circle back with Carlos. Uh, the question is going to be what is the next step for school street um, as far as applying for funding and where that funding would come from to, to do the work. Uh, Carlos said he's 95% of the way done. Um, and so you know, the next step would be, do we have a conversation about him doing the I think he said it was 60% construction documents that are required for mass works. Mm -hmm. um, are we, we, we had a, a little bit of a conversation about the timing of mass works and how long it would take to get that done. And typically when mass works applications are due and whether or not, um, that, that timing is going to work out for this year and whether or not that's the right, uh, funding source to go after for this, um, so I, I think the the challenge is going to is again with the uncertainty of everything. Are they going to push MassWorks back a little bit? Do we have a little bit more breathing room? And then um, what is our our capacity to put together a successful application if there if we don't have breathing room? So Jeff, about the MassWorks, this fits in the definition. Work application. That was the goal when we started. That hasn't changed, is it? It fits in, yes, the, the letter of the MassWorks application um, in that it's an infrastructure improvement um, and it's related to housing development um, at 120 North Main Street. My experience uh, is that housing and economic development really wants to see uh, that this mass work, that the housing or the economic development benefit would not happen, but for the mass works grant. Um, and, and so, yes, we, we could absolutely apply. It, it's a legitimate um, application, but the question is the, the likelihood of actually receiving mass works funds for it. Okay, so the next step there is for you to pursue pursue it with Carlos and and if, if we need to review something you'll just let us know yeah yep. and I think that there are other options it was you know I think the original grant that got the design money was was an ADA accessible and there you know we could look for funds related to that as well um, so um, what about the um, uh, are, we're going to get in touch with mass dot to find out sort of where they were at on the roundabout plan and see if we could step back while we tried to do the vision yes so i i had reached out um to maureen at uh FERCOG. i think um before i got here she had met with all of you um and you had asked her to, to bring them in and then uh the select board also um sent a letter to mass highway just saying that they 
would like to stay involved and appraised of um, things that are going on at the intersection. Um, and so we are working on, on getting an update. I haven't heard anything. Um, I haven't heard that there's been any progress or any movement. Other than that, I think the letter from the select board went out two weeks ago. Yeah, I think my concern would be that, you know, if we, uh, given everything that's going on, if let's say this whole, you know, trying to get this committee really focused on the intersection may get somewhat delayed, um, may not be the top priority in, te in, uh, in the world for the next few months. Um, I just, I think we just don't want to see, you know, uh, you know, it could be an infusion of, it, of infrastructure money and we just, I don't want to see the, you know, roundabout going in when we haven't really had time to uh, consider what the options are. I mean, is that fair to sort of... Yeah, and, and I raised this uh, with FERCOG as well mm -hmm. um, and they... They assured me that if there is community opposition to a project and, and to the configuration that MassDOT would not go, I mean, <laughs> it's still the state coming in. Right so. now, there's no traffic at the intersection. <laughs> it's flowing very nicely. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, you know, you know, I, 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 think that they're they're gonna there's gonna be a public process yeah right um the, i was at a franklin County, uh transportation improvement plan advisory board meeting i think that's the name of it and the only mass dot um you know tip related project was north north main um there was nothing extending into the intersection so you know, uh, other than what I've heard fr from this group and, and from FERCOG that, that there is some interest in, in changing the intersection, I haven't heard anything directly from MassDOT that there are any plans. So could I weigh in with the correspondence that the select board sent? The, 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 there was actually two of them. The first was thanking the folks at District 2 for the quick response in addressing the backup on South Main thing more. Yeah, that was great. Boy, and boy, that made a huge difference, Scott. <laughs> and and I, this was this was carrot. This was the carrot. And then the second correspondence we made sure to incorporate this in, in a letter was to remind them that it's an important intersection. We have a motivated community, as there are any design consideration before it gets too far to, and I'm paraphrasing, to come off, we'd, we'd like to have a public forum around, not a hearing, because that's security is a public forum. And that was the correspondence they were both sent out in the same, in the same, two different envelopes the same day. Good. Thank you for doing that. So. I, I'm just hoping we can have a public forum, so. Whatever that may be, we just did it. So um, I guess my plan for the committee is we'll meet on an as needed basis um, uh, as these things come up. And, you know, if, I, if we can start moving the visioning along, something along for the center of town, I think that's great, but. Um, Let's see. Let's see where the next couple of weeks take us. So we, you, I, I, I clocked in late. Jeff shared that we tied through uh, Rep. Blaze application for the vision, right? Yes. Yeah. And do we know what the timing on that would be? Well, I, I mean, because it sounds like the budget, the budget may be delayed. I, I think the application went in before. All of the COVID hit the fan, so yeah. a little awkward. Great, thank you so much. 
And just to let you know, in, in the spare moments, I have been doing my homework on the RFP as far as updating the demographic information. There was oh, a little bit you. of, so um, once I've finished doing that, I'll send it back around. Okay. Yeah, I think we all um, took some responsibilities for the RFP and um, we can continue to work on that. So we have at least what, if funding comes through, we have that ready to go. All right, um, do we have anything else? I don't have anything. Um, so, do we have a motion to adjourn? I moved. Okay, and a second? Second. All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.